Okay, in our warm-up here, they're asking us to find the length of AB. That's from this corner to the far corner of the box. And so we can use the distance formula, uh, which helps us find the distance between um, two points. Now, here in x1 minus x2, this gives me the distance of uh, in the x direction, which they've already given us, which is 11. Here, this is the distance between two points in the y direction. They've already given us that. That's um, 7. And here, that's the distance between two points in the z direction, and they've already given us, which is 6. So I use the distance formula, and then this gives me the, um, the length from A to B uh, to three significant figures. Now I went through this uh, process to find the length of DC, and then I realized, wait a second, all I needed was the 6 and the 11 to find the angle of DCB, DCB, which is just the side of the box. So if I use the, the 6 and the 11 um, to find this angle, I can use tangent because I've got the opposite side and the adjacent side. So tangent theta equals 6 over 11, um, and I can do the inverse tangent on the calculator, and then I get inverse tangent of 6 over 11 gives me the angle, and here's my angle. Now, um, inverse tangent, it's good that we did this example first because uh, it helps us uh, with what we're going to be doing, which is inverse functions. <clears throat> so if I go to inverse function, um, uh, so here's, an, here's a function where all the inputs lead to an output, okay? And if, it, if, one, if each value goes to exactly one value over here in the output, then it is a function. Now, if I'm able to do the reverse, that each output um, goes to the input or it's switched around, if that goes to just one value, then that means the inverse is also a function. So basically, if I've got f of x equals y, then I could say the inverse of y equals x. Basically, we're just switching the, the input value and the output value, which is exactly what we did here. We had our input value was the angle, and that gives us the fraction. So we do the inverse of tangent. We do the, the, the new input is, we have the output and the input switched. Okay, so in this first example, it says if I've got, um, can you find the value of the inverse of 18? Looking here, the inverse of 18, the output, the new output would be 3. Okay, All right. <clears throat> so in this warm up here, it says use the graph to find f of 2. So if my x value is 2, I go up here and I could see that the y value is going to be 5, so I know that the answer there is going to be 5. This says the inverse function of 9, so this is saying what the y value would be 9, I go over here, and I know the x value is going to be 4. And then it says solve for the inverse of a equals 1, so, um, so here I'm going to be taking the x value of being 1, and if the x value is 1, the y value is going to be 3. You might want to hit pause and think about this some more. Okay, next questions. Okay, state whether the functions are inverse and give the reason for each. So this here is not, in, uh, this inverse is not 1 to 1, so it's not a function. Now what does that mean, 1 to 1? So here, I've got this x value goes to uh, an output, and this negative, this, this input also, I'm sorry, this input also goes to that same output of 4. So because these two inputs go to a single output, when I do the inverse, uh, it, it's not going to be 1 to 1, because 4 can go to negative 2 and 2. Okay, the, this is... Uh, one to one, so the inverse is a function. Um, it says 
f of x equals x plus 1 maps the, this, um, this domain or this input. So I, I made a map of these input values and I plugged in negative 2 in for x, so negative 2 plus 1 gives me uh, negative 1, and I plugged in each of these values into the map, so like if x is 0, 0 plus 1 gives me 1, so that uh, output would be 1. So after plugging these all into the function, I see that this is 1 to 1. I plug these values in, uh, so here we got these inputs, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and uh, if I plug these into this function, I get 1 plus negative 1 squared, which gives me 2. I also plug in 1, and I get 1 plus 1 squared, it also gives me 2. So since I've got two, um, these two inputs give me the same output of 2, if I do the inverse, uh, it's not going to be a function. Okay. This one you might have gotten a little confused because the lines crisscrossed, right? But it is still one to one. A single value goes to a single value, this single value, this single value goes to a single value. So this is one to one. Okay, so, and that's why the inverse exists. Okay, write down the value of each of these. So when x is one, the output is one. When x is two, the output is five. When the inverse is zero, then the, um, the output is 3. When the inverse is 2, the output is negative 3. So it goes in reverse. Construct a map of the, of the inverse function. So basically, I'm taking all of these outputs and putting them as, and switching the input and output ovals. Okay. Um, the graphs show four linear functions. Um, state whether these are one-to-one -one functions uh, and give the reason. Describe the difference between a linear function and its inverse function uh, and one that does not. So this is not a one-to-one -one, uh, because the um, for every x value, so this is, this is a function but the inverse is not a function. Okay. Um, here this is one to one, this here is one to one, this here is one to one, and you may want to hit pause. When the slope of the function is not, uh, when the slope is not zero, then the inverse is going to be a function. So here my slope is not zero. Now here I do have a zero slope. So uh, and as you can see, for every different x value, I've got the same y value. So if I did a map of that, so all of these different x values have the same y value. If I do the inverse of this, then 4 has all of these outputs. So that's not a function. Okay. If the slope of the function is 0, then it's not going to have an inverse. It's not an inverse function. Okay, you may want to hit pause to copy this down. Okay, so here I look at this function 2x4. Um, explain why f has an, in, uh, has an inverse. So for every x value I plug in, um, I get uh, an output that is 1 to 1. Okay, and the slope is not 0. Okay, so if I plug in negative 4 in for x, I'm going to get uh, 2 times negative 4 plus 4, which is going to give me negative 4. Um, here, if the y value is 2, I plug in 2 in for the y value, and then I can solve for x, and I get negative 3 for x. Same thing here. If I plug in 0 for the y value, I get 0 equals 2x plus 4, so then I, I get uh, negative 4 equals 2x, and then divide by 2, we get negative 2. If I plug in 0 in for, for x, we get 4. If I plug in 1 in for x, we get 6. 3 in for x, we get 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. Okay. So doing the mapping here, 
here's the x value, here's the y value, and it gets written like this, and you can write the coordinates here, and then this is simply just writing it in reverse. Okay, so now we want to draw this function. So I took these points, negative 4, comma 4, and I plotted it. Negative 3, comma 2, I plotted it. 0, comma 4, I plotted it. So all of these lines on the yellow line are the f of x function. Okay, then I plotted the inverse function, where it's negative 4, negative 4, it's right there, negative 2, negative 3 is there, and, uh, and then I plot all of these points here. Now, <clears throat> uh, what can we say about the inverse function? How would you find more points? So you could find more points by um, simply uh, plugging in the values for x and, um, and then you're getting your y value. Okay? And I'm going to show in a minute how we can get an inverse function. Uh, but this inverse function, you can see here, if I go uh, if I go up 2, it goes over 4, so I have a slope of 1 half, and I have a y-intercept of negative 2, so that's how I got the function, just from looking at the graph. And as I said, in the uh, next example, I'm going to show you how to get um, this function algebraically. Okay? And um, what can you say about the position of the point of, of negative b with respect to b? and what about the position of C prime to C. So if you look at this, um, you can see that it's kind of, it looks like it's a reflection on this pink line. And if you draw the line y equals x and twirl your paper like this, you can see that this is a reflection on the pink line. So inverse functions are always a reflection on the pink line when you switch the y with the x and the x with the y. So uh, there's a point that lies on both graphs, and that is negative 4 comma negative 4, because the x value and the y values are the same. Okay, so the identity line is this a line of reflection, which is y equals x. And the position of f and the inverse of f is the reflection of each other on the identity line. Okay, so if I want to get an inverse function, you can switch the x with the y and the y with the x and get our points. Now, here's how you figure out, you should copy this down even though they didn't ask you to do this. This is how you can figure out an inverse function. So they gave you uh, this line here, and it looks like the equation of this line is um, the slope is I go up 3 and over 2 so my slope is 3 halves and my y-intercept is negative 1 so here is the function of the yellow line so I'm just going to write instead of g of x I'm going to write y so if I want to solve for the inverse function we're going to switch the x and the y and then solve for, for y so here, I, I turned this y into an x, and I turned this x into a y, and now I'm going to solve for y. So the first thing I can do is I can add 1 on both sides, and then I get 3 halves y equals x plus 1 from adding 1 on both sides. And then I want to get just y here, so I can multiply the, both sides by the reciprocal, uh, which is 2 thirds. So if I multiply 2 thirds times this, uh, and, and this, we get this. And then I could do distributive property with a two-thirds. And here is my inverse function. Okay, So um, this is one-to-one. -one. And um, so the domain, uh, so these four points of A, B, C, and D, I plot, I put those in the domain. And then the inverse, I found out the y values for those points. And then for the inverse function, I just, the y values of the range become the domain. And the domain values now become the range. You just switch the x and y points. <clears throat> okay, so to find the inverse function, you take the function and switch the x with the y.
I think I've said that enough times. Okay, so in this equation, we want to find the inverse of 8. So I'm going to plug in 8 as, as, uh, in, as this, and then we solve for y. Okay, draw the inverse of each function. So I basically, I found points on the yellow function, and here are the points that I found, and then I switched the x and the y values, I plotted those points, and that helped me draw the inverse function. And you can always check to see if the inverse function works, if the yellow graph and the blue graph look like a reflection of each other. So here's this graph. So I plotted some points from the yellow graph. I have negative 4, 0, I've got 0, 2, and I've got 6, 3. I switched the x and the y values, and then I plotted those points and drew this graph. And you can see, once again, it looks like a reflection. You might want to hit pause. Okay. Next page, last page. Okay. Uh, consider this function here, and it goes only from 0 to 3. Notice it goes from 0 to 3, and it stops. And this point was a mistake. Don't draw that point. Okay, so draw the graph of x on the pair of axes here, okay, uh, using the same scale. So um, if I plug in uh, 3 in for x, I end up with negative uh, 2.5. <clears throat> Is that right? Okay, and so that goes right here. So if I plug in 3 in for x, I'm here at negative 2.5. And if I plug in 0 in for x, we end up with 5. So I've got these two points. This point here is um, 0. Good. This point here is 0, 5, and this point here is um, 3, negative 2.5. And then I just connected those two dots to draw the line. So to find the inverse function, this point here is um, uh, negative 2.5, 3, and this point here is 5, 0. Alright, and then the domain. Um, so they've told you the domain was 0 to 3. So the range is going to be uh, the y value range, which is from negative 2.5 all the way up to 5. So the y value goes from negative 2.5 all the way up to 5. And then uh, the domain and range are switched for the inverse function. This is a pretty good example, pretty important example. Okay, draw the inverse function. That's what I just did. And um, find the coordinates of the point that lie uh, on the graph of the inverse and on, on y equals x. So um, <clears throat> they want you to find this point. What that lies on, on both functions. So what I did is I said, okay, well, where does this yellow line meet y equals x? So I'm, I'm finding the intersection of y equals x and my function. So basically, um, I changed this f of x into x, and we're trying to figure out where uh, the intersection is of the dotted line and the yellow line. So x equals negative 2.5x plus 5. I added 2.5x on both sides. I divided both sides by 3.5 and have 5 over 3.5. If I wanted in integers here, which IB doesn't want this decimal here, I could multiply both sides top and bottom by 2 and I get 7 over 10. So if the x coordinate is 7, 10 over 7, the y coordinate is also going to be 10 over 7. And this is the coordinate of the point that lies on both the inverse function and the function and on y equals x. All three of these intersect together. You may want to hit pause. You might want to replay this one to, to think about this one again. 
Okay, so the first thing I did before I graphed this, but you can look at the graph if you want, um, is I looked at the domain. X is greater than 1. So they wanted you to write down the domain and range of the function and the inverse function. So, so the domain is X is greater than 0. The range is uh, Y is between negative 1 and 2. It's important to see how they've written this because uh, we're going to be doing an activity um, this semester where this type of notation is very important. Okay, so to find the domain and range of the inverse, we simply switch the x and the y and the y and the x, the domain and the range. Uh, write down the values of the inverse of 0.5. So when, uh, when the inverse is 0.5, from here, we can see that the, the output is going to be 1. Um, <clears throat> determine whether f is an increasing function or a decreasing function. So then I decided to draw this graph. And the first thing I did is I said, okay, when x is 1, um, uh, y is 0.5. And I plotted this right here. And then I said, when f is 0, uh, y is 2. So I plotted this point here. And then I looked at my domain. And it says x is always greater than 0, so I knew that it was always going to be this going this direction. Okay. And, I, and then from the range, it says only between negative 1 and 2. So it, I knew that it's never going to be outside. It's only going to be between here and here. So I knew if it's going this direction and it's only between here and here, it's going to go this direction and never cross. Uh, uh, negative 1. So, um, and uh, it has to be going forever this way because uh, uh, it, the domain of the original function is x is always greater than 0. So this is going to go this way to infinity. It's going to always be going this way to infinity. Okay. Notice here I've got this dotted line and that's called an asymptote. And we will be talking about asymptotes uh, this um, semester. Okay, so uh, because the graph is going this way, it's a decreasing function. Okay, solve the equation for the inverse uh, of when 0. So this is saying on the original function when x is 0, the output is 2. Here, when the, um, when the output is 0, the input of the inverse function is going to be 2. hope this helps.